Hello and welcome to another Excel Tips video. I am Sumit Bansal and in today's video, I'm going to show you a very simple Power Query trick to extract the first and the last column from your data set. Now, this is very easy using the user interface. You can just go there and you can delete all the columns except the first and the last column. But the problem is when your data changes, when more columns are added, then it doesn't remain dynamic. So in this video, I'm going to show you a very simple way to make this dynamic. Let's see how it's done. So let me first open this data in Power Query. So I have this table and I have the product ID name category along with these three years of sales data. And this data can expand. So uh, a few years later, maybe I would have 2025 data, 2026 data. So I want to make it dynamic so that it always gives me the product ID and the sales data of the last column. Now let me first open this in Power Query. So I would come here, right click, then go to get data from table range. This opens my data in Power Query here and let me delete this change type step just for the simplicity of it. And now what I need is somehow to get the first and the last column dynamically so that even if the data changes, I'm still able to extract it. So to do that, I'm going to use a very simple function in the M code. So let's come here and click on this FX icon. And when I do that, it inserts a new step. Let's rename this step to first call because I'm going to extract the name of the first column here. And to get the name of the first column, I am going to use a formula, which is table dot column names. So this is the function that I have. And what it does is it takes the source table, the table that I have, which in this case is source, and it is going to give me the names of all the columns in the table as a list. See what happens when I click anywhere, it gives me a list and this list has all the names of the columns. Now, the good thing is this is dynamic. So if I add more columns, this list is going to automatically expand or contract. Now I want to extract the first item here for first column. So I can either do two things. I can either first come here uh, to the formula bar and simply type zero in curly brackets. So what this does is as of now, it has given me a list that has all these items, but when I type zero in curly brackets, it is going to give me the first item in the list. Now, because Power Query lists are zero based indexing, zero would refer to the first item. So see what happens when I click enter, it gives me product ID, which is the first item. The other thing you can do is you can also use this formula called list dot first. And what this does is at the name suggest, it gives you the first item in the list. So again, when I click anywhere, it gives me the name. So let's continue with the list dot first because it is going to be more consistent with the list dot last function that will give us the last column name. So again, I have the first column name. Let's come here to the FX icon, click here. Now I'm going to use the same formula and instead of first, I'm going to use last. And now when I click anywhere, it gives me the last column name. So now I have two steps. The first column name is through this formula, which is list dot first and then the table column names. And then I have this step here and let's rename this and call this last call. So now I've extracted the first and the last column name and these are dynamic. Now I want to use this table and somehow extract the, the names of the columns that I have here in first call and last call. So again, let's go to this FX step here. And here I'm going to use a function called table dot select columns, which is this one. Now, what this does is it will ask me the source table that I want from which I want the columns. And then it will ask me the names of the columns. And I could give either the name of one column or multiple columns as a list. So see what happens here. It takes the table. The first argument is the table, which is going to be source in this case. And the second is the name of the column. So in this case here, I would use source, which is my source table. And then I need to provide the name of the columns and I can either provide one name or I can provide multiple names as a list. So to create a list, I would put this in curly brackets and then within curly brackets, I would put the names of the columns. So the first column name is first call and the last column name is last call. Okay, so this it's not picking up the name of the column, but anyway, this is the name of the uh, step. Now, when I click anywhere, you can see it has given me the first column and the last column from my data set. And the thing is, if I come here and I change anything, if I have another column here, or if I delete this column, for example, let's say if I come here and I remove this column, now sales 2023 is the column that I have, but you'll see it still gives me the first and the last column 
only. It doesn't give me any, it's dynamic. It is going to adjust based on your source table. Let me remove this remove column step. So now I have my data. Now what you can also do is in this case, I have split it into three steps to make it easier for you to understand, but you can copy this formula. And instead of having these three steps, you can just have one single step. So in this case, instead of first call, I can have this formula. And then instead of last call, I can have this entire formula. So I can paste it here. And then I don't need these two steps here because I've already used these steps in the formula. So with one single formula, you now have the first and the last column. And now I can now load it back into my Excel table. And as I said, it is going to be dynamic. So if I come here and I change this, let's say I add another data for 2026. And now I come back to this data and I refresh this, you'll see that it is going to automatically update. So it will always give you the first and the last column. So this is how you can use simple functions in M code to make your data dynamic and extract what you want. That's it in this video. I hope you found this useful. Also, if you're liking these videos, please subscribe to this YouTube channel and click on the bell icon so that you never miss out on any new Excel tips video I come up with. Thank you and have a nice day.